Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Anton van Ven. I'm a PhD student uh, working in the field of artificial intelligence. That's also my interest. And one of the goals that I'm interested in is um, how can you make those agents better or curious? And um, I explore different possibilities. And what I think is most promising and what's not being used much yet is entropy, especially relative entropy. Um, especially as, as a background, if you look at the uh, most famous book on artificial intelligence, surprisingly, you don't even find the words relative entropy or Kubrick Leiden divergence in it. Well, here it's very famous, but in that field, because I've been to conference like uh, developmental robotics and uh, artificial general intelligence, and there it's a pretty new concept. So uh, maybe some things are not new for you, but I hope to break the bridge, uh, the gap with artificial intelligence. So the overview of my talk is first uh, the questions and the goals uh, that I had. Um, I'll discuss a bit about the foundations and the axioms. Um, and I'm also especially interested in interpretation, so I will talk a bit about that. And I will be a bit provocative, uh, probably, but um, uh, that will be interesting. And I will uh, give some new proposals. That means I think uh, they are new. And as an example, I will show how it can be used, for example, uh, to play mastermind, as, uh, as an example. Um, so the questions and the goals are, uh, yeah, how can an build a model of the world? How to quantify the difference between model and the world, learning progress, surprise? And how can this be minimized uh, so the agent learns about the world? And uh, there are different uh, possibilities if you look at uh, things for surprise. There are many definitions, but um, uh, the, I will turn out to be one quantity I prefer and uh, use for those things. Um, yeah, I want to, because I was very inspired and very uh, impressed by the work of uh, Christian Giffen, uh, because I think that's very important, because I want to build on a good foundation. At first, he has to do uh, inference, so I take probabilities, and I want to have some solid foundation, and I found, uh, yeah. This is the best uh, I, I found. So it's very general. This uh, includes Bayesian inference and max um, And it has a foundation that it only uh, results in one um, quantity to be uh, minimized, to maximized. And that's uh, also a good sign. Um, we call it entropy S. Uh, it was designed to be maximized. And it has this form. You all know it, probably. The Q is the prior and P the posterior. And, um, so this can be uh, used for uh, constraints and for, for priors. Um, and uh, I think it's very good and useful. Um, now we go a bit to the interpretation. And um, I always like to inter interpret things. And, but I look at some quotes in the past from, from Norman called Shannon, uh, called measure entropy, because no one really knows what entropy is. So in the debate, you have always the advantage. And, um, uh, the quote I read from uh, the The answer to the question, what's interpreted is out to be trivial and somewhat surprising. It needs some interpretation. We don't know what entropy means. We only know what to use it. So this explains why the correct interpretation has to be so that there is none. So um, I agree with being practical, so it just has to work. But still, I always like to understand. So maybe it's the, uh, another way to, uh, to look at it. Um, and maybe what makes it a bit easier to, uh, uh, to understand and make, make uh, an interpretation is um, by interpreting the positive uh, variant. So that the only answer which is minus sign, the method is exactly the same, the results are the same. Um, so that means uh, instead of they call it maximum entropy, uh, then it will be renamed to minimum relative entropy, but it's uh, mathematically the same except for a minus sign. Uh, advantage is that it's uh, always positive to Gibbs inequality. And what I will uh, discuss and will uh, show that it could be easier to interpret in this way. And um, uh, yeah, I think the fact that entropy S is always negative uh, uh, because it was designed to be maximized it is also an extension of uh, Shannon's entropy. So it's closer to Mark's end. So if you see it as an extension to that, then it's very uh, natural to derive with this uh, property. But um, maybe relative entropy as a positive quantity could also have some benefits for interpretation. Um, well, um, 
Well, this is the first point. point is not very strong because um, max n is also being used max, as maximum entropy, and the new uh, maximum relative entropy is uh, sometimes uses the same name. Uh, it can be sometimes confusing, um, but there are different uh, ways. And um, um, yeah, so I also want to uh, make a connection with the, the, the interpretation of distances. And then it will be easier to look at positive quantities than um, negative quantity. So um, if you want to interpret relative entropy as a distance, uh, it has good properties like it's uh, uh, non-negative. Um, it's only mm -hmm. zero if it's exactly the same. But it doesn't have all the features of uh, proper distance, like because it's not symmetrical. Uh, it does not obey the Pringle relationship. Uh, in general, I will come back to that. Um, but I want to propose it anyway as a kind of distance uh, for my problem with uh, an agent that wants to model the world. Um, to quantify the similarity between the world and the model of the world by the agent is the Kubert Light divergence between uh, the world and the model of the world uh, called M. And I will give some. Um, uh, reasons why this could be a good proposal. Um, first, uh, the uh, asymmetry was not a real good feature of a distance, but um, there's also an asymmetry between the world and the beliefs about the world and what the agent has. Um, uh, for, for an example, let um, um, MB represent a belief uh, by the agent about the probability of seeing a black uh, swan that's uh, Standard example of uh, falsification by Popper. And that will be the actual real probability in the world. Um, if we want to uh, see how they compare, um, then we look at the terms in the relative entropy, they look like that. So it's asymmetrical to, uh, between uh, W and, uh, and M. Uh, suppose in the first case that um, um, so there is no black spots in the world. Uh, but the Asian believes that uh, there could be a black swan. Um, but there's, there's really no big problem because the Asian could keep believing it would see it another time. So there's no contradiction. Um, so you could also even say, like, um, believe in God cannot be falsified, uh, because, uh, like things like that. But if you do it the other way around, um, if um, the agent believes that there is no black swan, but there exists a black swan in the world. And if the agent observes a black swan, then um, the terms become infinite because uh, uh, m is in the denominator and yeah, the least for affinities. Um, and I want to determine that as falsification. Um, that means the belief is incompatible with, uh, with the world and needs to change um, because it's, uh, yeah. It's just incompatible. Um, this is why I chose uh, W and M in this order instead of the other way around. So there's a reason because the beliefs about the world and the world itself uh, have this asymmetry that um, comes back to this uh, definition. So in, in this, uh, this way, the, this property of relative entropy is a feature um, instead of an effect. Um, and to make it a bit more general, is um, what I propose is that um, um, this measure can quantify the level of disagreement between the model of the world and the value. Um, the values in between can be seen as a way to quantify um, a falsification principle on a continuous scale. So Popper only has falsification and agreement, but uh, if something is uh, close, uh, yeah, almost true, then it's very closer to zero, and if something is not very true, then it's closer, uh, it's higher value. So, to also to compare theories with, with the world could also maybe be expressed uh, with these relative entropies. And then you can compare this, what is the best way? So, it would be uh, a kind of continuous scale where yeah, the infinity would be the falsification. Um, this is already uh, mentioned uh, a bit. Um, so I propose this for to design an agent that uh, wants to model the world. Um, so my goal is to to model to uh, as the agent model the world, 
um, this quantity has to be minimized. And um, how can you do that? Because if you think about if Ray's real world that Jason wants to model, then how does he have access to this? How can he minimize this quantity? Um, because uh, if he knows what Ray is, then, then he W is, then it already has the right model. So, uh, so it cannot minimize it directly. So the question then is, how can the agent minimize this? For that, I will derive some new things. And um, for this, I used the uh, Pythagorean theorem that's very famous in relative entities. And I tried to give uh, what I think, I've never seen it before, a new interpretation um, that uh, can be useful uh, to go ahead with the problem. Um, so the statement is that uh, uh, the m be the but one is the prior distribution, the other is the probability used for the minimized relative entropy to get to a set of constraints, and another distribution is uh, also satisfies the same constraints. I already changed the variables or changed the distribution so they uh, match with what I'm working towards. Um, so uh, this is just a triangle uh, relation with. Um, the quantities that I want to uh, analyze. Um, and what, um, there are some uh, requirements of, uh, for this um, equality, so on the, on the constraints. And if you look at the original paper by Tisa, he also had um, some requirements that uh, are not that strict, and then he gets inequality. Because its requirements are less strong, the effect makes it more general. So um, often looks like uh, equality looks better, but in fact this is a strong statement because it's more general. Um, and this way you can, because I also switched uh, one term to the other side, it makes it easier to interpret. Um, so if you look at um, the left side, so that is um, the uh, M accent is the why posterior belief? M was the why belief. So the distance uh, of the model of the world and the agent uh, after the minimization um, is smaller or equal to the prior distance minus this term. And um, this, uh, this means that the model of the world improves with at least this last term. And um, uh, yeah. If you know that uh, the Pythagorean theorem holds, then you can use the, the equality sign. But uh, this get, goes towards what I want to do, that how can we minimize um, this first term? And um, because we cannot access W directly, but we do uh, uh, yeah, can work with the last term. So if we um, well, propose to uh, have a kind of uh, other minimum entropy principle is by minimizing the left term, and that can be done by um, maximizing this term because it's a negative sign. So if you maximize this term on the right, then um, it minimizes the, the quantity I want to minimize maximally. And uh, so this is the first step. Um, but if we uh, yeah, try to interpret this part, it's, it's just the difference between the posterior and the, and the prior. And it's very common actually, so you've seen a lot of things. So also um, the original principle of uh, maximum entropy is also based on, uh, on that. And um, it's also be used for learning progress, information gain. It represents, you can inter interpret it as the change of beliefs, or the change between posterior and uh, prior. And also, because it's a change of beliefs, it's kind of a surprise. It's a measure for surprise. Um, and also, it's been used by uh, Itty and Baldi. They uh, made an official uh, proposal to define Bayesian surprise with the culprit diversions divergence exactly in this form. So, um, we arrived at that another way, but um, yeah, it fits nicely. So we confirmed this definition and um, even the principle that uh, I described that would uh, lead to maximization of this term. And what they did in an experiment with humans 
they had something on, on their eyes where they could analyze where people would look in a movie. And they found out that humans would automatically focus on things in the movie that uh, would generate maximum Bayesian surprise. And they compared it with, I think, uh, six other measures like saliency and normal entropy. And they found out that, so this term, the Bayesian surprise, with Cobalt Light coefficients, was the best way to describe and predict where humans would look. So, um, our post led to maximization of that. So, this is in agreement with that. Even humans seem to do that. And so, that's very encouraging. Um, and uh, so I wanted to uh, go back to the previous. So the previous uh, original minimum relativity was based on this term. So that uh, it's, it's only internal, so it happens in the mind of the agent. It's, uh, it's used for inference, uh, updating beliefs. So no real external actions uh, are involved. But what I propose is new is minimization of the first term. It can only be indirect, indirectly, because it's not known. It can be done by maximizing this term. And you see a kind of almost like a contradiction. So this one let's minimize it, and I try to maximize it. But there's no contradiction because it works on one level. It even is a requirement of the uh, equation I derived that minimization uh, has to be done for the uh, Pythagoras um, um, identity to hold. And so the, the second part uses actions to maximize this term, and that's what makes agents do things. And for an example, I tried to uh, implement, I implemented it for to play Mastermind. So I uh, could have all simple examples, but this is more famous. So uh, to, in this example, I give everything value so you see what everything is. Uh, so with the normal standard uh, game, there's uh, 1,296 possible codes. So the prior belief, the M, would be like uh, yeah, even distribution of all these possibilities. And real world is only one code, so it has all zeros but what to like a delta function. And the goal is that uh, the agent wants to find the code. Um, suppose it started with uh, the guess A, A, B, C, so I said, of course, I uh, use letters, that's easier. And suppose he gets the feedback to on the correct spot and to our in the incorrect spot. So at least five codes left make it more easier to uh, make everything explicit. Um, so you can calculate um, the posterior belief that minimizes uh, this term from the given constraints by updating beliefs that are compatible with uh, that to zero. Um, and because of, sy of the symmetry, uh, the five main options are equal to problems, so they are normalized. So in fact, you can use the general method of, uh, of uh, relative entropy. Uh, to, um, uh, to find a solution, but in this case it's very simple, but it can be done for more complex cases. And to give all the values to, to check this uh, equation is uh, so the difference between the world and uh, the posterior belief is this. You, you can just, of course, everything is known, you can calculate it, and yes, I can confirm that the step uh, that holds. So that's uh, uh, the quality is um, confirmed. And it also gets for, for other things. Um, and if the agent gets it right, then uh, the difference is zero. So the agent knows the world in this example. Um, and this is uh, where, where the uh, told bits. Um, I will tell now here about. about uh, how to optimize um, uh, the agent. So the, the first equation was independent of uh, how well of the agent played, but if he uh, wants to choose the right action, then he um, has to uh, find the, the right moves to make. I have to, because of time, I have to be a bit uh, quick on this. Um, what he's doing is, uh, for every possible guess in his mind, he tries to calculate the expected uh, learning progress. Um, and that can be done by uh, the internal beliefs it has. Uh, and uh, so for every uh, possible case, the, the, the agent can calculate expected learning progress. And ex for um, that would be like the, the m uh, j is the 
are the internal beliefs about probability that that uh, option is the real code, and that is the, the uh, expected. So yeah, that's the uh, surprise um, if uh, if that would be uh, the case. A bit, a bit uh, faster now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe I can uh, skip this because it's uh, uh, because of time. What, uh, what the conclusions are is that uh, this um, this way leads to um, the same um, set as, as found by Irving. And if I do uh, another more uh, strategy to minimize uh, the maximum learning rate, it uh, um, turns out to be the risk uh, case scenario that's it's found by Knut. And it, it finds the solution in five uh, cases. Um, so the benefits are a general method uh, that leads to automatically to the best uh, to one step ahead strategy for masterminds. So if you look at the papers, they are very complex and this falls naturally uh, from the principle I propose. Um, and the advantage is that it can be applied because that is new to a biased version of mastermind, which is the cost of form for uniform distribution, but to another known distribution. And then all the other existing methods of uh, solving mastermind, because they're very specialized, they fail, they cannot handle it. But in this approach, you can just use another prior in the, in the system and do the same uh, techniques and calculations. And then you uh, also get to the optimal solution. And uh, another uh, way would be to, uh, for game to situations where W is not a delta function, but some other known uh, unknown distribution. For mm -hmm. example, I was thinking about maybe a kind of uh, quantum mastermind where there are superpositions of possibilities, so that the feedback would be more complex. But uh, the system can still converge towards uh, W, that's the, the distribution of the real world. And also the other algorithms are very specialized, they don't apply to it. So in fact, um, I think I've generalized some exi existing um, Solutions for mastermind, and uh, it offers some more things that uh, because it's so general. And um, yeah, then a uh, bit more quick again, but um, this was the main conclusion. And um, um, so, what I uh, propose is that relative uh, entropy is, uh, is very useful, especially in the field of artificial intelligence, it's new. And uh, I think there's a lot of uh, possibilities. and. Uh, yeah, proposal of the difference between the world and the mold of the world by the agent. Uh, I think it's also a new kind of proposal to define it that way. And um, uh, yeah, I'm interested uh, in your thoughts. Any questions? Yeah. confused by uh, uh, the maximum minimum argument that you gave. Uh, normally we minimize callback lifeline information, yeah. but when you said maximize it, you mean maximize the minimum of the callback lifeline information. Am I right? Um, yeah, so uh, there's a lot of uh, points. Uh, you meant when in the stretch of, of mastermind or earlier? Uh, uh, can, can you go back a few times? Uh, Uh, yeah, I think it's around here. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is uh, essentially, so this, um, I propose to minimize, because that means to build a uh, model of the world, is to, uh, it means to minimize this first term, because that's how I define the difference between the world and the agent. But the problem is, you cannot uh, minimize this directly, so I use this equation, uh, based on the Pitagorean theorem, to uh, minimize in another way. So this uh, equation means only the way to minimize uh, this first term is by maximizing this because of the minus sign. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this equation only holds after this has been minimized. So um, first, because of the inference, um, this term is, is minimized. But the only way to maximize it is that if the agent 
chooses smart actions where it can learn the most. So this is uh, also the, the Bayesian surprise of the learning progress. So what I do in the mastermind strategy is look for situations where if this is minimized, it is maximum. So it always has to be minimized, but a situation where it uh, gets a lot of new information, then uh, after minimization, this still has value. And if this value is as large as possible, then uh, the improvement in the model of the world is also uh, better. But what, what is the control variables here? Because I, I, I think to get M prime, you, well, M is the prior, and, uh, and you get the posterior M prime by, by minimizing the callback liable inflation D of M prime given M. But then it seems that there is no control variable anymore. What, what is the control variable? Um, that are the actions. So the actions of robot can take. So it's external. So um, if the agent um, takes, for example, a kind of guess, so he gets an option to choose between the next guess and the mastermind game. And for each guess, he can calculate what this term would be. So what uh, the learning progress would be. And from all those guesses, it would pick uh, the guess in which uh, this would be largest. So it tries to find uh, a lot of, as much new information as possible. So I, you, I agree this has to be minimized this time because it's the private of the equation. But you step, that's why I said it's on another level. Uh, you have to find the actions that, that minimize, uh, that maximize this. And uh, that is the yeah, new conceptual uh, idea I introduced. So, uh, so, so there are two different levels of. Uh, so one I said is the two part, and one is the other one is the actions the agent can take. And uh, uh, well, I showed uh, maybe it was a bit quick to, uh, to show all the details, but it works for the example of uh, the mastermind. It gives the two uh, best strategies uh, for one step ahead uh, strategies automatically. So, um, if you read the papers, they are voluntarily specialized and. This falls naturally, so it's uh, yeah, pretty nice. Of the last question. In the mastermind game, how do you how do you quantify best strategy? A best strategy. I have two strategies. One is to uh, mm -hmm. calculate uh, the expected. No, no. Um, you, 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 you said that this, what you do, is the best one-step strategy. What does that mean, best? Um, um, well, um, if I go one step ahead, then it's, uh, um, then it's a limitation. So the, the best strategy of mastermind is go to a whole tree and find the best solution. But I limit myself to one, looking one step ahead, and then there are only, yeah, Two possibilities left is to uh, calculate expected uh, surprise, expected learning rate for each guess, and then choose the maximum. And the other one is to um, choose the, from all the possibilities, you check the, um, the minimum learning rate, and then you check that. So one is, the, is the, to optimize the expected learning rate, and the other one is to, uh, it's a kind of worst case scenario, you minimize the worst case. And um, so I don't claim to have uh, the best mastermind strategy, but uh, for the uh, one step ahead, this automatically uh, results in the two existing very good strategies that are the most famous. Let's thank the speaker.